differences, whether they be in our differences in abilities, our races, or our sexual orientations, are the palette from which the universe paints its masterpiece. I spoke to the network and I said, when you, when you put this show on the air, you don't just put a good show on the air, you make us all better people. Welcome to the Media Access Awards. here to encourage the film and television industry to make their projects, make the film and television industry look more like the world. Happy to be here to support the Media Access people because they're doing an awesome thing which is bringing people with disabilities into the film and television world. They've been far too long overlooked. And diversity to me is very important to show people what this world is really like. Throughout the history of the world, uh, it has been critical that we tell each other about who we are where we come from and what might be possible. We all know someone with a disability. It could be a parent with Parkinson's, a child with autism, or a friend in a wheelchair. As America ages and medicine advances, this population will only grow. They deserve a place in the stories that Hollywood tells. You have to have talent and make the magic as an actor or a singer or a dancer. But there are a lot of extra obstacles for people with disabilities. And we're trying to uh, even the playing field a little bit. 25% of the U.S. population has some form of a disability and less than 3% of the characters on screen do. When you make content for the audiences as they are, and Hollywood is not doing that, as we all know, you will make more money. So if you can't do it for the right reasons, do it for the wrong ones. The men and women we honor today represent the best in the business at showing people with disabilities as they are, just as nutty as everyone else. We walked in, she said, is this the Oscars? I said, it's like the Oscars, but with more wheelchairs and sign language. You ready, interpreter? <laughs> hip, hop, the hip it to the hip it, the hip, hip, a hoppy, you don't stop. Now that I'm 95, I cross the room, I get a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm deaf and blind. Thank you. Michael Keaton. It's rare that a day goes by that I don't think about every time you reach over and you tie your shoe, absentmindedly reach across and grab a salt shaker, um, forget the keys to your car and just walk back to your room or run back to your room. All the little things that not only my mother just took pre-planning, but everyone who has a disability. And we just take these things for granted. My dad came out with a big smile on his face and said, you got the part. I was so happy. I couldn't stop smiling. I was just so dancing. I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had the honor of hosting this event some years ago, and I was not invited back. Those of you who are there know why, but be that as it may, I am very happy to introduce this year's co-hosts. I did it myself, by the way. One guy carried the whole load. But your co-hosts today are a young comedian, who made Howie Mandel wet his pants on America's Got Talent, and Howie doesn't like germs, so that was a big deal. And the star of the big hit Netflix show, Dear White People, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Drew Lynch and Logan Browning. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the stand-up comedian who stutters, which uh, was an interesting choice for hosting. They were like, how do we make an, an award show even longer? <laughs> Public speaking is easy when you can't see the audience. <laughs> You know, able-bodied hearing people in general, they generally think that it's literally impossible for disabled people to be happy. I was wondering, why do people think that way? And then I realized the answer was, it's how TV and film portrays us. It's an honor to be here this morning. I'm really delighted to be a part of this. I'm blown away by the power and the love in this room. Thank you for giving this award. I will try to keep making you all proud. And so you, Mom, and so my dad. I really love you guys. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of the guilds for coming together to do this. I think this is a pretty amazing thing. It's the greatest honor I've ever gotten in my life. This means the world to you. The award you have given me is probably the best award I've had throughout my career. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you for this award. We are so honored to be acknowledged by Media Access. Everybody in the world should be able to find themselves on the screen. Receiving this award as a producer means so much to me because representation is so important. 
not just in front of the camera, but also behind the camera. I think all for giving me the tools to have a fighting chance to finally not feel invisible to the world and to ensure that the future generation doesn't feel the same. And watch the screen come alive with authentic roles for everyone. We should all be so proud of the work that we have done and so excited for what we're going to do in the future. Welcome to Meet the Biz. Um, today to me is a very special day and it is um, you know, I mentioned this a lot about two of my favorite words are family and love. And today we have two people that I really feel like brings the extended family all together. Um, they are the heads of the Media Access Awards. They saved it and brought it back as a magical annual event Today we have Deborah Kalla and Alan Rucker. <laughs> Where's the drum roll? Yes. <laughs> you know, Hello. Hey, David. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm I'm in my four walls, experiencing this whole thing like it. <laughs> well, David, I, I love doing this with you and for you because you are part of our family and have been since day one. I have Absolutely. <laughs> we love you and admire everything that you do. do. You are just about the best. Oh, just well. About the, just about the best. You got a little work to do, but just about the best. <laughs> so, oh are. my God. Well, you know, and, and saying it's that, a I, bit. what? It's like Sammy Davis Jr. used to say, it's a love thing here going on here. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Well, that's what Meet the Biz is about. I, I really, and I'm so happy that I'm started to do this during this one positive thing that's happened out of this whole quarantine stuff is really, it keeps me, it keeps me going and I make it, I try to make it a positive feeling for people where they can get away from it for a while and, and say, oh yeah, there, there's something past quarantine. Um, and you know, because we are also locked in our homes, we don't know what people are doing, but there's like all the stuff going on in our homes that people are working, people are, you know, developing things, people are, you know, uh, in pre-production on stuff and classes and, and workshops and seminars. So there is a lot of buzzing going on. And when the doors are open, finally, we're, it's going to be a stampede of, of, of energy and, and, and things that got developed and done during this period. So, you know, got to look at the bright side. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, it, it made me think, look on the bright side of life. Ba -da, ba -da, da -da. <laughs> um, so where did you, what, what made you like reach and save the Media Access Awards? I know that it was going, it, it's going on its 41st year this year, correct? Right. 41st year, yes, and our 11th year for Ellen and I. Now, where did you where did you both meet? How did you decide? Hey, we've got to we've got to keep this going. It's almost like there was a big meeting, David, and everyone said we got to save the media access awards. And then everyone left, and I looked and I saw her, and she saw me, and I guess well, I literally. Guess <laughs> uh, no, I started when I became paralyzed in 1996, but I was working at the Writers Guild. Right. Uh, I was the head of the Writers with Disabilities Committee, and Deb and I actually met at an affair where a bunch of advocates got together, like Gail Williamson, et cetera, probably all the people you've talked to, and everybody said, and the unions, that was really helpful. Deb yeah. was representing the Producers Guild, I was representing the Writers Guild, and then there were after people. 
And uh, it was simply this urgency to save, the, to bring the show back because it had actually gone off the air for two years. Right. Three years. Three years. Three years. Yeah. 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 It really, it really got. Uh, and I swear, Deb, correct me if I'm wrong, someone said, well, geez, someone's going to have to produce this thing. Yeah. And everyone looked at the person from the producer's guild, of course, <laughs> and she said, oh, okay, I'll do it. It I'll was do it literally like that. Okay, we need to save this. This is really important. Now, who's going to do this? <laughs> yeah. And I said, she said, well, I'll produce it. And I said, well, you know, I'll write it thinking that we would do it for one, maybe two years, and then see it take off and stand back and pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. But, whoa, we didn't know what we were getting into. We still No, I mean, yeah, I remember sitting at our very first media access, and it was like we didn't have any clips, anybody's clip uh, of their work. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have much anything. We're like, we Xeroxed the program, you know, at Kinko's. And, um, you know, and there were 100 people at the Peninsula Hotel. I remember. And, and it was a cup of coffee and a bagel. That was it. But I, to me, as I was sitting there and Pat Harvey started to uh, introduce the show, I started sobbing and I knew then I would never stop doing this because it, it seriously before I didn't realize how important the media access is and I had to see it like produce it one year sit there in the audience which I always do the day of, um, of the show to realize how big how important uh, disability inclusion is. Mm. And so that was 11 years ago. Right. And my first impression was, well, first of all, just remember that that room was so small that the fire marshals were standing by not to let us let, you know, the 103rd person in. And, uh, but my first impression was, I, I first saw uh, the first year we gave the Writers Guild Award to uh, Breaking Bad. What's his name, Deb? Vince Gilligan. Uh, uh, Vince Gilligan. And I could see how excited he was to be recognized for doing something in his show, which, you know, he just did kind of out of instinct. He, he had a roommate who was disabled, or was just like his, the son of the show, and he was just so touched. And then as it went on the next year, the next year, the people that really moved me were always the young kids with disabilities often in the audience, not even there to be recognized, but just just enjoy what you called it, that family gathering, David, or some kind of group reassurance that, you know, we're not a bunch of freaks out there, that this thing is real and building and there are people that are looking out for you and, and trying to help in every way. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's actually uh, one of our obstacles or an amazing learning opportunity this year, being that we're not going to be live, is how do you keep that family vibe right. on a show that is pre-recorded where, you know, the recipients are not going to be feeding off of the people and having that magical moment where there's so much uh, being exchanged you know, amongst people. So how do we keep that? Because to us, that is the most important thing. That's, you don't that's have that the whole show. <laughs> and we're yeah. trying to do it now without the whole show. Just that moment of those people getting on stage and being recognized and yeah. making comments and that audience appreciation we don't have that this year. So it's it's a very emotional show, David. You've been to it many times. Oh, gosh. Uh, every year. And you know that that's a hard thing that we're going to have to try to, I don't know. Finish. Yeah, well, to me, the Media Access Awards is one of the most important in the industry, one of the most important award shows. And it because it really comes from the heart, it comes from a... Um, a creative base yet, like I said again, the family base. And it's not what I really see it doing and, and it, it is connecting everyone. 
in the entertainment industry. And, and that's what, what I feel that you're both doing with it and how it has, you know, from the, even the beginning. How do you see it that it's changed from when, let's say, from before or when you got it to now? Oh, we have, when we first started, it was like, oh my God, who are we going to nominate? <laughs> there was nobody. What writer? What director? What producer? Nobody's doing anything. You know, this was 11 years ago. Right. So there was, there were basically nothing on the air. It was just like, we wanted to do it. And now when, you know, the unions get together and we get together to choose our honorees, it's like, how about him? How about her? What do you think of this show? What do you think of that show? And that is the big change. Yeah. Because before it was like, we didn't know who to nominate. And now we have so many people to nominate. Not that we don't have a, a, a long way to go, but just in that, we see how much things have changed. Right. And we have really the help, certainly from the beginning, the help of SAG and AFTRA, the Producers Guild and the Writers Guild and the Casting Directors of America, because as we were going, they, they give awards and they stepped up with nominations that Deb and I didn't, at least initially, didn't really know about these people. Now we do, and now, and now, as she says, this is a kind of an idea because there's so much, so many shows that aren't on the air that didn't get made that were postponed for a year, et cetera. But, but nevertheless, we've we've also we've we've located or they've kind of come to us very, very, very uh, distinguished shows that we're really proud to present. Oh my gosh, and and how it has grown again. Through, from the 11 years ago to now, that I mean, this last year was like, oh, wow. It's just like every year it gets bigger and bigger and better. And um, what what would you- that was, our big, that was our big splash last year, David, and then <laughs> the virus hit. <laughs> well, I mean, this is, like you said, it's gonna be a challenge this year, but I think it's gonna be incredible. Uh, just I, I think it's, I mean, we are going for incredible because we like to do things bigger and better. Yeah. And also our partners, Easter Seals, uh, Easter Seals of Southern California, um, they're an amazing, um, uh, amazing partnership. And, you know, any crazy thing that we come up with, um, you know, they have said, okay, let's go for it. And they have really been amazing. So um, they really have. They really have been very, oh, very supportive. Just a support, and it's it must. It, it now. How many years have you been with Easter Seals? This is our third year. Nice. Yeah, they, and very, four very. Years ago, yes. they came up to us and took us out to lunch, a free lunch, David. You don't want to miss out <laughs> on those. And said, "Hey, we're doing this." They'd already started working with Nick Novicki. Yeah, we probably talked to. Oh yeah, just. Uh, and uh, so they were getting, you know, they were just kind of dipping their toe in the water of disability in Hollywood, and they've got, you know, full bore now, and, and we really would be lost without them. Right. Yeah. No. Very. I mean, amazing group of people, and whenever I connect with them, it's like you get that light. You get. You could see that it's like. And, and, and again, I feel like it's those seeds that have been planted throughout the years are like having people come to you or to us or, you know, everybody's joining together to make one strong so-called love fest, which we need more of the, the love this day and age, right? <laughs> absolutely, mm. absolutely. These are about, very right? trying times. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what would you like to see happen in the future in regards to the Media Access Awards and, and what is going on in the um, diversity, disability community and inclusion? I mean, I'd like to uh, retire the Media Access Awards <laughs> in the very far future, meaning that we won't need to do this because inclusion will just be part of, so uh, be part of the fabric of media. 
So yeah. we, we exist media access because we need to support people that are uh, creating these characters, that are writing them, producing them, acting in them, casting them, putting their money into these projects. We need to say, we see you, we applaud you. We need to, um, to others that are not doing it to see that this is such an important thing. So we have a purpose. I would like in the future, not today, because I love doing the media access, but in the far future, I'd like to quit the media access and not have media access anymore because there will be so many uh, actors with disabilities, writers, producers, and directors all being nominated for Oscars and Emmys and, and Golden Globes and, and Tonys. And we won't need to do a media access. The focus will never be their disability. Do you know the old say that uh, a medical doctor, the job of a medical doctor yeah. is to put himself out of business, is to cure everyone in his vicinity so there's no more business. And that's kind of what we, we're, we're trying to put ourselves out of business. We think it probably won't happen tomorrow. But uh, no, I think our next step, uh, we have to take it at some point is a televised version of the media access Awards. absolutely we're making we're trying we're talking to certain people and this is really you, you have the foundation world all of them good-hearted people really trying to then you have the real world of television the real world of film right right and so you have to make inroads into that world in order to, to take what i'd say is our next step so that's we just hope we could do that over the next year or so I, I, I think that's a brilliant idea and uh, to see all the, the all actors, all performers coming together on this show and just it's that little shift of the societal shift, the entertainment shift that people go, oh, and they start, like you say, stop thinking about it so we don't even need it anymore. Right. It just becomes part of the fabric. Um, I, I could, uh, and I'm gonna ho hopefully have you both on separately because I wrote a, a list. I was looking through, of course, and I knew a lot of it, but I still was going, oh, you know, I mean, I could do an inter a whole interview on each of you about where you came from and, and the books that you both wrote. I mean, uh, health and fitness books, Deborah, and, and then, of course, uh, Alan, you wrote books Did on- Did you know that, Alan? What? Did yes. you know I wrote two books? Yes, yeah, I did know that, but you've never given me a copy. <laughs> so right? You made me want to eat my broccoli. Pulling stuff out of out of the um, out of what did you call it? Out of the trunk or? You know? uh, uh, listen, I knew a guy. You guys might know who he is. Ben Stein, the the writer. Yeah. He literally used to have books. You want a copy of my new book? And he'd open up his truck, and there he would have like you know two dozen copies that he did. <laughs> kind of like a mafia selling cigarettes out of the back of a car, right? Right. Uh, but you gotta send me over. Yeah. Well, we both done a lot of different crazy things. That's oh, for yeah. sure. But we uh, focused here. The thing about this year's show, David. Yeah. Is the upside, if there is an upside, is that it will be streaming all across America because it's a virtual show and, and all these people will show up on, on camera anyway. So the, for the first time, because the show has always been a Hollywood show, it's been about Hollywood, the people who come are from Hollywood, you know, and so we're happy that we're going to have at least an attempt to reach outside of Hollywood to just the American disability community, not just the Hollywood disability community. And that we see that as setting the stage for the, you know, a, a company, we hope, television, you know, annual television show, right. the Access Awards. When well, especially with the 30th well, anniversary the of the what? ADA. Say that again? Especially with the 30th anniversary of the ADA this year. Right. Well, every year is an anniversary of the ADA. Yeah. <laughs> I have one every year, too, and so does you so do. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Anyway. No, I've been, no it's going to be happening in November this year? Yeah, November 19th. Okay. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 
love it. Can, is there any little surprise or hints that you could like tease us with yet or not yet? Uh, <laughs> my, my lips are sealed. There, there, there are some serious surprises. What are you talking serious about? Both surprises. In people, both in people who are going to be in the show and the show. Uh, it's going to be very entertaining, David. We always set out to do not a, it was not a fundraiser. It was not a way for everyone to get to wring their hands. It was a show about entertainment and with this underlying message. And so we've tried to keep it that way. And this year, we're trying to even push that envelope a little because it's going out to so many people. And, you know, we want to make sure that people have a good time. I think it's going to be really fun and everybody's going to go like, oh my God, him, her, this. <laughs> oh, I love this. And I, you know what's going to be so oh, nice? Right, that's, that's our commercial right there. Her going, him, her. <laughs> I'll send it over. We'll, we'll edit it in. <laughs> um, and what's going to be so nice is that performing art, all the students at Performing Arts Studio West, over a hundred of them, and, and Meet the Biz, and, and uh, Inclusion Films, and More to Act Players, and everyone will be able to be a part of this, this right. because it will be so available for everyone. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So that's what we're excited about, is the fact that everyone is going to be able to watch this and participate. Yeah. You know, there's no limitation, a physical limitation, which is what we always had to deal with. You know, every show we did, we went to a bigger space, bigger space, and each time there were like people all the way to the doors, you know? So um, now it's like the more the merrier. Right, well, obviously the best of both worlds is to have all those 400 people or whatever our crowd was last year in that space because that collective energy is just uh, add to be able to send it out across America to people who couldn't be there. Right. Uh, I mean, David, you know, can I make a point of saying something about David, Deb? David yeah. did a fantastic job of casting the entire disability scene, which for people who don't know what it is, it's an annual had a writing competition about disability scenes, which we picked the best can, and then they're all directed and acted out this year virtually by dis actors with disabilities. So half of the writers, are, you don't have to be disabled to write this show, but a lot of the writers are disabled, but the show, the screens are good. So we poured, so we said, David, could you cast this for us this year? which is the biggest job of all, and he did fantastic. Some oh. of the people were just fantastic. And, excuse me, what's the woman, I always forget her name, who was the narrator? Anita Hollander. Yeah, she did a fantastic job. She's brilliant. She really kind of grounded the thing. Yeah. So, and even then, David, as you were saying, getting the students at the Performing Arts Center, et cetera, uh, one of our members teaches at South, uh, uh, Northridge, yeah. uh, whatever it is, UC Northridge, whatever you call it, Cal State Northridge, here I get it. Uh, and so she was giving her st writing students, screenwriting students, extra credit for watching the discipline, ah. <laughs> which I thought was great. I mean, that's what you need. You gotta, you gotta get these young people who are either disabled themselves or can, you know, or good creative minds and can all of a sudden see that people with disabilities are, first of all, wild for adults in America and everybody knows one and your next door neighbor or your brother or your sister or your aunt and we'll start working these people into stories. It just makes for richer storytelling. Yeah, more levels to of humanity to right. each character. Um, I, well, I was blessed to do it, I, and, and I was blessed to be asked to do it. I, I, I went to the first one years ago and right. thought it was, wow, this is uh, incredible. And then this year, of course, I was called up to cast it, and I was, I mean, I was so happy with, I was so blessed to get such amazing people in it, like you said. It and, was awesome. Oh, I, thank you. And, and you know, and it was fun too. I mean, I can mention everybody. I mean, everybody I thought was 
incredible and, and amazing. And I was so happy we got some of the students like Luke Zimmerman, uh, who's not, you know, he's an actor. He was on television show for five years and, and uh, Bernard Smith in there. And, you know, I, I could list everybody, but uh, it was really, you know, when you jump into it and you're having all this work to do, but then you get into it. And, and again, it's that, you know, I, 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 you know, I will not get tired of saying family because it really, it, you well, know. We're, we're tired of hearing it. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Yes, but not tired of living it. <laughs> um, but uh, well, thank you for that. It was it was an honor to do it this year. For instance, Toby just killed Toby Forrest. Ah, oh. he played radically different roles. They were all kind of loud characters, and he was born to play them. He was so good, really. Good. Well, he was one of. I mean, I always think of Toby whenever I think of somebody to cast. I, he's one of the first people I always think of, and. And I was shocked that he had never been a part of that before. I was shocked uh, too, because I, you know, other people always cast me, not because I don't know. But and you know, same with Kathy Buckley. Kathy Buckley was great. I'm sorry, John Lawson didn't get in. He's been in in the. In oh, the I past. know. You know, I really, I wanted to get. You know, there, you only have so many spaces you can fill. It's like, can I put him? Right. How about like two narrators or this or that? You know. But I really felt too, to have a, you know, to have that female motherly strong voice as the narrator. And I just thought that, and, I, and again, as a casting director, I'm always like smorgasbord, you know, what does the producer's director want ultimately, but I want to bring amazing possibilities to it. Kathy Buckley was great. And I, and it's so bad that she hasn't been with us before, but since we're probably going to ask you to cast again next year, <laughs> you don't have to say yes now. God knows we don't know what's going to happen in the next two weeks, right? Let alone <laughs> next year. But uh, you really brought a lot of fresh faces and talent to the party. Thank you. All right, that's enough. That's okay, that's <laughs> enough. And by the way, you were talking uh, about your your hat before, uh, before right? that that you have that you were going to wear your performing arts studio West hat, but you wore it out. <laughs> It was too dark. It was just, it's too black with, you know, anyway. Schmutz. I really like it. Yeah. Too well, smutty. I have one more question to ask again. This is, uh, again, I, I, I hope to have you each back separately because you, you have such histories in the industry and, and you have such, uh, I mean, so much going on. The one question that I would ask is, what is the moment in your life that you're most proud of? Oh, Jesus. Professionally, uh, personally. personally. Whatever on. you, whatever you comes to your mind. Gotta narrow it down. Uh, well. One of each, if you want. Deb, do you, do you have an answer? I have an answer if you need Go to. Go for it. Okay. I've had many proud moments. The moment that uh, marrying my wife and having my two children were just, that's way up there. But professionally, I always, from a very young age, wanted to be a writer. And I wasn't very good at it. I had my critical mind just kept getting in the way. And, but I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And the first time I wrote a book with Martin Mull called The History of White People in America. Yeah. And I remember it being in a hotel room in New York when the publishers, Penguin Publishers, knocked on the door. A guy you know, knocked on the door and says, here's a copy of your book the first one out, and I cried because I had reached that plateau, and it really, really moved me. That was that was a key moment in my professional life. Yeah, yeah. Personal life, of course, is meeting you, David, is the... <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person that... Um, you know, I, I have had many, um, you know, important moments in my life, but it's, I, I don't have one the most important because I put so much of me, so much of my energy into everything that I do that when it's finished, when it's done and I can sit back and watch, that's the most 
important moment in my life and then I have another most important moment in my life. Right. And there, you know, it's just Good. about really fulfilling something that you set yourself out to do and you do it and it's really, really amazing that feeling of like, I did it, look, I did this and then you start all over again. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm like one of those boring people that don't have like the person that you most admire in your life or your most important moment. Um, actually, I do have the person I most admire in my life and that is Benjamin Franklin. Oh. Ah, Benja and why Benjamin Franklin? The man was everything. He was a writer, he was a politician, he was a scientist, he was a humanitarian, he was a traveler. I mean, it, 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 uh, of like, you know, not, not just a writer, he was an amazing writer, not just a politician, he was an amazing politician, he was an amazing scientist. Like, everything he did was done so brilliantly. Yeah. And I just love, you know, his integrity. So, I mean, yeah, so he's the only person, if you said, who would you want to have dinner with? Benjamin Franklin. Right. Well, maybe David can get him for his next series. Oh, yeah. I can always yeah. try. You could probably find an actor. I actually tried. I tried to write a, a pilot where one of the characters was Benjamin Franklin, but it was too complicated. Right. We'll do a little seance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I'm... I'm excited again as every year this time of year I sort of go oh it's almost the media access awards time so this is going to be a very special year and um, yes. thank, thank you both thank, thank you, both. you David thank you well for what you what you have done by keeping it alive and Easter seals coming aboard it's um, it's exciting and wonderful and it brings us all together I hate to tell you this yes. David it's just not a good word to use in this business. What? You are an inspiration. You were an inspiration from to me from the very, when I first did one of those Meet the Biz classes at the Writers Guild. You remember that occasion? I love that. Just walked away and said, well, this, this Zimmerman guy, Jesus, he's going to be a hard <laughs> to I told you that I would always do everything for you except for selling my body <laughs> if you could because no one wants to be. No one would want it. It would be a, you wouldn't you wouldn't get a dime for it anyway. Uh, but to thank you for everything you do, David. Really seriously. Thank you. Thank you.